Stop, before you do any project like this, or like this, there's one thing that you can do for free that will make a normal wall like this look good. And it's based on a principle that mathematicians and artists and architects have been doing for thousands of years, and that is based on this little tool right here. What? This is called a Fibonacci gauge, a ratio of one to 1.618. This can actually show you everything that is in the golden rectangle or phi, or basically having a pleasing to the eye proportion. So credit cards, TV screens, logos of uh, pretty much everything in pop culture, going back to architecture, to art. And it boils down to all the different ways that we build structures are based on this golden ratio or phi. And what phi represents is a long number, 1.618, hold on, cheat code, 0339887498594, and just goes on and on and on. What that creates is actually a number spiral, and you can see that spiral and artwork and all kinds of different stuff. No, this is not Illuminati stuff. This is something that's factual, discovered by uh, Leonardo of Pisa, who discovered it with breeding rabbits. But it comes into furniture building, and it comes to all these different things. So doing a project like this really relies on those numbers, and you can really make it look so good with just a crunching a few numbers in your calculator. Now that 1.618 blah, 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 it's kind of like pi, where pi is 3.14 and then it's got all the crazy numbers after it. You only have to remember the 3.14 with pi, right? The same thing goes with the Fibonacci sequence, and that is remembering 1.618 or 0.618. Let's start out with the base number. This room is 12 foot wide. So I can take that 12 feet and I can do everything in feet or I can convert it into inches. So if I take 12 times 12, that's gonna give me 144 inches. And I need to go smaller. I wanna find all the proportions smaller that are proportional to 12 feet. I'm gonna take the 0.618 and multiply that by my 144. I'm gonna come up with my first parameter and that is gonna be 89 inches. 89 inches is the first proportion down from the 12 feet. If I take my 89 inches and I multiply that by 0.618, I'm gonna get 55 inches. Do that again, I'm gonna get 34 inches. Then I'm gonna get 21, 13 inches, eight inches, five inches, three inches. Now I have a basis for my numbers to pull from and go, all right, how big do I want this panel to be? How far much, you know, what should my spacing be between here and there? How is this all gonna fit proportionally on my wall? That's how I do it. So the first thing we want to consider is if I have 12 feet of space here, I'm going to pick some of my numbers from my Fibonacci numbers that I crunched out. 89 inches. So if I look back here at this wall and I say, well, 89 inches is pretty long. I have no real reason, no use of 89 inches, even though this is a very tall standing height. My next number is 55 inches. Well, I could do that. I could take 55 inches is right here and I could make a 55 inch panel to come up right about where my hand is at. So if I go down to my next number, 34 inches, that is where we came up with our panel height, okay? So the panel height I'm doing on center, so the center of this molding to the center of that molding is 34 inches, and the center of the molding to the center of the molding is 21 inches. Both are two numbers that we got by multiplying are proportional and aesthetically pleasing to the eye, right? And that's the whole purpose of this. It's why all your products are designed and based around this number because it's pleasing to the eye. This rectangle up here is 89 inches by 21. The lengths are proportional to one another in proportion to the room. Is it ideal? I could break it up and make it smaller, but it doesn't matter. As long as I'm still kind of using those different uh, proportions, that is what we came up with. Now let's figure out how these all lay out on the wall. So one of the things that we have to think about is this is a 12 foot wide wall. So if I take my 12 feet and I've got a 21 inch on center panel, which is gonna get me to 24 inches, right? So there's my nice round number. If it's 21 inch on center, so that means to the center of the, each molding, or I could even, you know, on the inside here is, is close to 21, pretty close, right? So the inside reveals 21, the outside reveals 24. Perfect, that's two foot. So if I take two and I divide it into my 12 foot space of my room, I can get six of these that will evenly fit into here. Well, I can't fit six because they're gonna be butt up against each other. That's kind of giving me this, this space that I have here. But what I can do is I can get one, two, three, four of those 24 inch rectangles in that space. And I've got to figure out some spacing in between. Then the spaces between are actually on center, they're uh, what, 13 inches on center? So 13 inch on center, the distance between here is actually another Fibonacci number. 
So we space this out so that the spaces in between here are proportional to the rectangles. All of this is laid out in proportion. And that's the big thing is get your number list and figure out how can I space this evenly? All right, this doesn't work. Well, let me take the, the length of the room and try to get some different numbers and see how they play nice. Um, so I've got 12 inches here, 12 inches here, and I have 12 inches here, and then I have six inches, and then I have six inches. So if we go together, we go two foot, two, four, six, eight feet, space between here, nine feet, 10 feet, 11 feet, and then we've got six inches and six inches, that's 12 feet. So I've got an even six on either side. I've got my uh, 13, uh, and we're talking about the on center, on the on center of these with the 12 inch reveal, right? So this is kind of stuff we want to think about when we're doing proportions like this. The same thing goes where I have five inches is one of my Fibonacci numbers. And so I have my five inches of reveal between my chair molding or whatever you want to call that. I have five inches, um, I have six or I have five that's going to be in between these. So I have that six going that way, which is very close to five. Um, the thing about Fibonacci numbers is you can't really stress about, oh, it's five inches. If it's within you know, three, four inches even, that's good. What we're trying to do is trying to perform something that looks aesthetically pleasing, something that's pleasing to the eye without it looking like you just kind of threw, uh, I went with the four feet and put a panel up. No, let's try to just simply crunch some numbers. You saw how long that took us to do that try to devise a, a method of, of making a space look as pleasing to the eye as, as possible. And so that's kind of what we did here. And all it is is by taking that 0.618. Now, let's say I have this smaller one down here and I want to go larger, is I can take the reverse as if I took my 34 inches and I multiplied it by 1.618. If I take 34 times 1.618, then I'll get my 55 and my 89 and my 144. It starts going up and up and up, right? So if I need a bigger number, I do it by the 1.618. If I need a smaller, then I do the 0.618. Same thing goes if I take my Fibonacci gauge and I hold it on here and I try to take this proportion to that proportion right here. I'm off a little, but I'm relatively close. See how I have the two smaller graphs, the two smaller uh, points on here? versus that one, that's saying that this distance here is in relation to that distance there. So that gives you kind of the general, you can get as nitpicky and fussy with this as you want, but something on this scale in this space, consider your overall distance wide, your overall distance up, not a lot of people have a 12 or 14 foot ceiling, you know, typically it's eight. So if I've got a 12 by eight, well, take that eight foot number and crunch that, times that all by 0.618, determine what that gets you. Take that eight foot and times it by 1.618, and that will give you numbers that you could use uh, to run lengthwise with a little bit longer uh, distance. Take the, the door, right? If I have a 30 inch door, 36 inch door, wherever I'm at in my house, take and multiply that of, of one of the two different numbers, and that will start to give you some idea of the space and what you're working with. So anyways, that's this um, picture of what we have behind me here. If you're gonna be doing something like this, this type of job is super, super easy. There's not a lot of what you need to do that's difficult. Um, I didn't go through. One thing that you need to be aware of if you do a project like this is if you paint the walls first, I would paint your trim, apply it, and if there's any touching up, because what happens is, is if I put this molding up on the wall and then I paint it, when you go to yank this down, when you're bored of this molding in five years, hopefully 10, all that paint, you're probably gonna have to go through, I shouldn't say probably, you're gonna have to actually go through and uh, drywall finish this and fix it all because that paint is gonna create a layer that you'll never get out with painting and you're gonna see all that trim molding from here on out. So if you do this, paint the whole wall blue first, paint all your trim separate, cut it, put it in, and then touch up where you join everything. And then if you wanted to, going around with caulk would be nice, but if you go around with caulk, Another word of the wise is that's gonna, you're gonna have to go and drywall texture it when you're done. So there's some pros and cons of doing this. Um, you know, I guess when you're done, you could throw up quarter inch drywall on the top of it, but you're, you're still gonna have to do finished work. So just think about some of the different ideas of what you can do when you're, you're doing this. You don't create a, a greater uh, annoyance for yourself. And uh, that's pretty much it on this uh, wall here. 
Now, before you tackle a project of this size, realize there's a couple things that I want to show you and some flaws like the wall behind me. If you look at the space here, you can see that there's a one by four where it's doubled up, where I've got two of these next to each other. Um, that works, I guess, in terms of seeing the wall change space. It can work if you're using that proportionally, um, but it would be typically better if you just had one of those and figuring out a way to terminate it and having this come over. Uh, it doesn't look bad, but it's just another uh, feature. Another thing is, is how these are cut. If you're looking at this upper eight foot one by four that goes that way, you can see that these terminate underneath it, where you can see this one goes all the way through and these are a short piece, so short piece, short piece, short piece up here it's a long piece that looks weird in my opinion so try to be consistent on how you are laying these out the other thing is these are mdf boards so mdf are actually um, rounded over so just be considerate of, of you know when you're coming and you're making these cuts here right i've got a 90 degree cut that's coming up to a beveled edge and so it's going to look weird like you see here as well. So there's lots of little nuances that you should be familiar with if you're tackling a project of this size. Same thing as I said in there, paint your wall first. Don't go putting all this up, then painting it because it's going to create a drywall finishing nightmare uh, once you get bored of it. The other thing is, is if you're looking at these two walls and these two spaces and how this goes, um, is figuring out how, are, how many of these equal panels can I get on these walls. I could measure this wall and I can measure that wall and get a total length of the room. That's the way it should be done. Uh, this one here, you can see it was measured this section divided into the space, this, this section divided into the space, and you actually can tell that, um, some of you might have noticed it by now, that the distance of these rectangles are actually a different size than the ones over here. That's because this wall was done independently of this wall over here. So um, factor in the whole shape of the room, even if it is a little odd, because um, you may not pick up on the fact that they are a little off, but you definitely can, uh, someone who's, who's a keen observer in that type. And, that, and that's a, the big thing, like I said, is all this spacing, the gaps, and, and how you go and cut all this and install it is taking your time, thinking it out, being proportional, and um, applying that so that when you look at it, it has a pleasing look, and we're not just guessing, going, well, I think right here will be a good height to get started. Um, give it some thought. Uh, use your Fibonacci sequence, use your numbers, put them into practice, you'll be happy with it. There's a reason they designed Ferraris based on this concept, the reason why everything you purchase is based on this concept. There's a reason why they have apps out there that judge your beauty. They're all your body components, if you take and you measure um, your features on your body, everything is in proportion, your foot with your forearm and your fingers and your eyes. It's everything found in nature and that's why it is so beautiful is because it's nature's beauty um, that we are applying functionally to our world of creation. And uh, there you go. We are creating our own beautiful things using this uh, theory of nature. So anyways, that's my two cents on using Fibonacci numbers to make your next project look awesome. Oh, I didn't even think about there's a mirror and you can see the vacuum and all the crap in the background. That's, oh, uh, and you can see the pillow under here. Crap.